In the last stream, we were working on automating and speeding up the production of cryptocurrency, which we have successfully done. We've got our new create system up and running with our boiler powering a steam engine and a rotational speed controller producing a large amount of encrypted matter. That encrypted matter is then being deployed by these four deployers onto our stone, which is being generated by the igneous extruder. All of that stone is transformed into this encrypted ore, which is then smelted into encrypted ingots. And thanks to the speed upgrades that we put into our assembly controller and our air compressor, the encrypted ingots are now much more quickly being transformed into cryptocurrency. And as you can see here, this has been chugging away between streams to the point where we now have almost 500. We've got 400 and 76 cryptocurrency ready to go which is more than enough for us to go on a little bit of a buying spree inside of the eShop specifically the very first thing that I would like to purchase is the angel ring again the quest book does specify that we should have the exact right amount here so that's 128 which means that we need an extra at uh, 22 and just to be safe I will put the uh, remaining cryptocurrency back in that storage drawer there boom boom and boom, we have an angel ring. The angel ring can go in the angel ring slot over here. And just like that, we have creative flight. No power requirements, no limitations, just infinite creative flight. That is super cool and is going to be super useful because as I mentioned in the last stream, one of the things that I want to start working towards now is the digital resources mod. This is a mod that's developed by the maker of this mod pack. But more importantly, it's just a super powerful way of generating resources. Maybe too powerful. It seems pretty busted once you get it going, but it does take a little bit of work to get there. Specifically, we need quite a bit of netherite. We need one nether star. And for us, more importantly, we need some dragon's breath and some shulker shells. The dragon's breath in particular is the part that's going to be the most tricky because the dragon's breath, of course, requires that we go through to the end and we right click some uh, empty glass bottles onto the dragon's breath. There's no other recipe for dragon's breath in this pack. And the reason that's difficult is that uh, in order to get to the end, we have to build an end portal. Uh, there is a quest for it. I believe it's up in getting there eventually. Yeah, there's a quest here to make the end portal frame. The end portal frame in this pack is made with two obsidian, one eye of ender, and eight end stone. A recipe that doesn't look too difficult, but the end stone here is where it gets tricky because in order to make one end stone, we need to craft together four end sand. And in order to make one end sand, we need one regular sand and one ender pearl in the mixer with a superheated blaze burner. So there are a few things that make this tricky. The first is that we're going to need a lot of ender pearls, specifically about 384, I think it is, because you need four ender pearls per end stone, and then you need eight end stone per end portal, and you need 12 end portal to get to the end. So we need quite a lot of ender pearls to make that happen. Uh, at the moment, we have zero ender pearls, and while we could go the somewhat tedious route of making ender pearls with chemistry, I don't think it's going to be worth doing. Like trying to get 400 lots of 16 mercury, 16 silicon and 16 neodymium is possible, but it's gonna be incredibly tedious. I think instead, one of the first things that we're going to work on in today's stream is setting up a mob farm to hopefully allow us to get a very large number of ender pearls in a very short period of time without having to do much in the way of, of manually crafting them. On top of that, uh, we also have to get the blaze burner superheated. This is also tricky because it means you have to feed the blaze burner a blaze cake. Much like right now, we're just feeding it regular fuel, coal, wood, whatever it is, in order to get it heated up. If you feed the blaze burner a blaze cake, it will become superheated, and that is required for certain recipes. In order to make the blaze cake, you have to fill a blaze cake base using a spout filled with lava. The blaze cake base is made by compacting together some cinder flour, sugar, and eggs. Now, the sugar and eggs are fine. We can make eggs using the combiner. We can get sugar from sugarcane, which we can grow incredibly quickly with SNED. And then finally, the cinder flour is where it gets a little bit trickier because we have to get a crushing wheel setup going and we have to drop netherrack into that crushing wheel setup to get the cinder flour. The crushing wheels require a, a very large craft that is done inside of the mechanical crafters. And the mechanical crafters are not super expensive, but they're a little expensive. They require... Uh, 
In order to make three of them, it requires one electron tube, one brass casing, and one crafting table. And as you can see, we need 21 of those mechanical crafters in order to get the crushing wheels. None of it is impossible to do, none of it is super difficult, but it's a few more steps than I was initially expecting to get through to the end, and so um, I don't think we're going to quite get into digital resources in this episode, but I'm hoping that by the end of today's stream, we'll be in a very good position to get started next episode with digital resources. So getting back to the beginning, I was saying that we should set up a mob farm, and I think that the easiest way for us to do that is going to be via the use of Dreadful Dirt. This is a block that's added by the Mob Grinding Utilities mod, and it spawns more hostile mobs. It is uh, basically uh, a recreation of Cursed Earth, if you've ever used that in previous Minecraft versions, and essentially, once you have it down, it will spawn significantly more mobs than you would normally spawn in a given block. Now, in order to get this, you have to right-click a rotten egg onto a 5x5 area of Dreadful Dirt. Now, normally, the way you do this is that uh, you get the uh, the dreadful chicken feed, this one right here, the GM chicken feed cursed, and uh, you feed that to a chicken and that will then produce the rotten egg. However, in this pack, it has been tweaked ever so slightly. Uh, this recipe for the cursed chicken feed is, uh, is disabled, but we can thankfully craft the rotten egg using 64 sulfur, 64 carbon, 64 chlorine, and one regular egg. None of which I don't think should be too difficult. Sulfur, we should have, we totally do. Carbon, we've got a ton of, and uh, we actually don't have enough, but we can make more using coal, which we can go ahead and break down over here. And then uh, finally, we need the chlorine, which I don't think we have much of currently. No, we have none. However, as we've done in the past, we can break down, I think it is this one here, nickel chloride, which we can get from cactus green. And of course, cactus green we can get from cactus, which we can grow very quickly on our sned. Currently, we have no cactus green, but we do have 36 cactus, and that does remind me that one of the first things I do want to do here as well is craft up another diamond furnace. Our old diamond furnace is uh, currently in use in our cryptocurrency making system, and uh, that does mean that currently we don't really have a uh, fast furnace available to us. Nevertheless, boom, there is our diamond furnace. We'll go ahead and replace the old one like so. And uh, did we ever end up putting a speed upgrade into this diamond furnace? We didn't. Okay, so you can add a speed augment to the uh, the furnaces from the iron furnaces mod to make it even faster. If we go at iron furnace, it's this one right here, the augment for speed, which is surprisingly easy to make. We are just missing a single piece of sugar, and uh, thankfully we do have the sugar can to make that happen. Boom. And boom. So you can right click it onto the furnace. Alternatively, you can click the augments button in the top right hand slot and then you'll see there are three slots for augments these are all different colors so you have to put um, whichever augment aligns to that color uh, so for example uh, you can either go for the green slot you can either go with an augment for speed or an augment for fuel efficiency the speed augment halves the cook time of all recipes but uses twice the amount of fuel whereas the fuel efficiency augment fuel heats up in the furnace twice as much but slows down the cooking speed by 25 percent so you get double the efficiency um, on the fuel, but things cook 25% slower. For us, I think the speed is uh, is definitely worth it. I think the trade-off there is, uh, is a no-brainer. Boom, and boom. And it really shouldn't take us too much green dye, I don't think, in order to get all of the chlorine that we're going to need to make this rotten egg. Now, the next question is where we're going to put this mob farm. And I think I might, for now at least, go ahead and drop it down in this room here. I think what we might do is clear out a five by five area in the floor. Now, this does have to be in a dark room. If it's not in a dark room, the uh, dreadful dirt will burn and just turn back into regular dirt. So you do want to make sure that as soon as you put the egg down to transform the dirt into dreadful dirt, that the dreadful dirt is in a dark room because if it has access to sunlight, and I think maybe even if it has access to, uh, to torchlight, it will burn the dreadful dirt and you'll be right back at square one and you'll have to make it again. Now, we also have to think about how we're going to actually kill the mobs once they are generated. Thankfully, that is where Mob Grinding Utilities uh, comes back. Mob Grinding Utilities also adds the Dreadful Dirt, but it adds this guy right here, the Mob Masher, which says that it is an advanced modular mob grinder, can be enhanced with mob mashing upgrades. Mobs mashed do count as player kills. This is a super powerful 
little device that we can put down and as soon as we give it a redstone signal any mob that touches it will start to take damage and eventually die which is fantastic that's exactly what we are after let's go ahead and drop down some of this green dye that's probably gonna be more than enough let's get some more chlorine i think a stack was what we needed it was indeed there we go fantastic so once we have a stack of carbon a stack of chlorine and a stack of sulfur the only thing remaining is the regular minecraft egg which is two protein and eight calcium carbonate do we have any calcium carbonate we do but not too much protein we should have we have two exactly although i'm pretty sure we can get more from breaking down string yes string gives us the uh, keratin here and then the keratin can be broken down into protein so calcium oxide oh no that's not even the right one that's calcium oxide we need calcium carbonate so calcium carbonate so it looks like we can get calcium from fluorite which is um, a crystal for mechanism, which we do have from our quarry. So if we break some of that down, uh, we then just need to combine that up with uh, oxygen and carbon. That's going to get us the carbonate. Let's go over here, type in carbonate. Make sure we get the right carbonate, which is this one. Drop in the carbon and the oxygen. And once we have a good amount of that, we can then go ahead and get ourselves some calcium carbonate. Calcium and carbonate at which point that should be everything for us to get ourselves a regular minecraft egg that is uh, protein and calcium carbonate nice at which point we can then put that egg right back in with a stack of chlorine a stack of sulfur and a stack of carbon nice that gets us the rotten egg so do we have some dirt we do we have 500 dirt ready to go so as i mentioned i think what i will do here is we'll kind of dig out a five by five area in the center of this room that's going to allow us to maximize the amount of dreadful dirt that we get from the one egg you could of course make this much bigger you could make multiple of these rotten eggs and then uh, put down multiple sets of, of 25 to get a massive cursed earth mob farm but um, already do be one this is going to create a lot of mobs so i think for us a five by five is going to be completely fine Now, as I said, I'm not going to put that down just yet because I don't want it to burn. Instead, let's go ahead and see if we can't make this mob masher. We need a block of redstone, two iron swords, and then I'm pretty sure we need more iron swords because the iron spikes here. Yeah, we need two iron spikes. How much iron do we have is my next question. We only have five iron left, which is not particularly great uh, we have been slowly but surely acquiring iron uh, via our quarry between streams but we don't really have that much at the moment and it looks like yeah we are uh, out of lava which has caused our quarry here to back up so real quick let's grab this bucket let's uh, fill this up but then also let's head back through to the nether and see if we can't fill this bucket up as well because uh, we are almost completely out of lava we're down to our last three buckets Okay, so I've put down another tank full of lava there, and I've also taken all of the iron out of the ender chest, because although uh, it's nice to have all of our ores coming in automatically and uh, being processed into ingots, it is actually more efficient if we uh, take the iron and then dissolve it and then process it, because uh, this gives us a uh, twice as many iron ingots as raw iron, whereas the foundry only gives us one ingot of iron, but then a little bit of nickel, which is, uh, is less than ideal for this specific situation so well uh, let's take some of that iron drop it in there and then we can smelt this after the fact to get us the largest possible amount of iron and hopefully that should be enough for us to get the uh, the mob masher here so once we have a, a fair bit of iron here let's see if we can't make these spikes so we need some more iron swords how many do we have did i make some i didn't okay we need six iron swords one two three four five and six we then also need at uh, two blocks of iron one and two and then boom and boom we have the mob masher nice so this guy as i mentioned previously can be placed down like so and if you give it a redstone signal such as a lever it will begin spinning and it will deal damage like that now um you can also activate this by placing a block of redstone underneath it which is probably what we'll end up doing because we need this to be inside of the mob farm area if we open it up 
we can see that there are all of these slots here for upgrades. There is the sharpness upgrade, the looting upgrade, the beheading upgrade, the arthropods upgrade, the range upgrade doesn't work for this, and then the smite upgrade. So uh, these upgrades here are for the fans from mob grinding utilities, but everything from arthropods down to smite can be placed into the mob measure, and they are going to allow it to become more powerful. Uh, specifically for us, I think the best upgrades here are going to be sharpness and looting. Looting, of course, is going to give us even more mob drops than we would otherwise normally get. And sharpness is going to allow the mob masher to kill mobs even faster. It's going to allow it to deal more damage, which is very useful in the uh, in the context of Dreadful Dirt, because the Dreadful Dirt is going to spawn so many mobs. We want those mobs dying as fast as possible so we can spawn even more mobs and, of course, get even more mob drops. At some point in the future, we might look at adding the beheading upgrades if we need any mob heads for any particular reason. We could also add uh, the arthropods upgrade to kill spiders a little faster, but I really don't think it's necessary. Uh, the same with smite as well. We could add that to kill other mobs a little bit quicker, but it's not a high priority, and I don't really think it's worth investing the resources just yet because it's not going to make uh, a massive difference. Now, we might not even be able to get too many of these um, sharpness upgrades. I would ideally like to put 10 of these in, but if we're going to get 10 of these, we need 40 iron swords, which is, uh, is 80 iron ingots. And uh, as of right now, we have five iron ingots in the system and maybe like 10 or 12 more. Yeah, 11 more over in our furnace. So we're not quite at, uh, at 80 iron ingots territory, but uh, thankfully it is always something we can add in the future to make this even more powerful. Uh, on the other hand, thankfully the looting upgrade is not too expensive. It requires four golden nuggets, four blue dye, and one redstone. Lapis has been coming in from our quarry. We're back up to 132 redstone. We're a little light up, but I think we can spare 10 to get the maximum number of looting upgrades. And then uh, gold-wise, we do have uh, a fair amount of gold. So using uh, 40 gold nuggets there is not going to be a problem for us whatsoever. So let's quickly craft up 40 blue dye. Once we have 40, we can then craft that down into the uh, 10 looting upgrades, fantastic, and we can go ahead and drop those into the mob masher. It's just that easy. Now, the next problem that we're going to run into is getting the mobs towards the mob masher here. As I mentioned a second ago, the mob grinding utilities mod does add the mob fan, which can be used to push mobs in certain directions. However, I think the, um, the better solution here is vector plates. These are super cool. They're from the dark utilities mod, and these basically work like conveyor belts. You put them down on the ground and you can use them to push mobs or items around in whichever direction you like. And they're also fairly easy to make. They're made with six deep slate, two sugar, and one slime ball. So right now we've got 12 slime balls, which is more than enough because you do get uh, six of these at a time. Of course, we only need uh, 24. So we need four batches of, uh, of vector plates, which is only four slime. Sugar, we can of course get via our snare. And then deep slate, I think we should have. We've got 19, we might have more in our pocket storage unit, which I've not been carrying around. Here we've got 2,400 in the pocket storage unit. I've not really been carrying this around too much because we've not been doing a ton of uh, mining recently, but uh, that is more than enough cobbled deep slate. For now, we'll go ahead, drop some of that into our system. Let me quickly go ahead and get some more sugar cane, at which point it should be fairly easy for us to craft up 24 vector plates. And uh, we can then also look at potentially upgrading them from uh, regular to fast extreme and uh, unfortunately not ultra there's no recipe for the ultra vector plates in uh, in this pack so a little bit of sugarcane later that should be everything we need in order to get one two three four batches of vector plates now in order to upgrade them to faster vector plates it's just gold and sugar and given that we're only making 24 of them i think this is definitely going to be worthwhile we could then even go a step further and go to extreme you know what? we might as well here we'll go for the highest here it's just a little bit of redstone and again some more sugar fantastic these are very fast by the way you put these down and if you step on them you get shot forward very quickly and, uh, and these are going to be very useful for moving the mobs incredibly quickly to uh to their death now to put these down you can hold shift and if you hold shift you won't get pushed by the vector plate and uh, basically we're just going to have all of these pointing towards the mob masher. They go down uh, facing whichever way you're facing. So if I put it down this way, it will face towards the mob masher, which is exactly what we want. We'll do something like this, get all of those down. And so now any mob that spawns anywhere in this area should get sent. Obviously there's gonna be a wall here that's gonna stop them just flying forward. But uh, as soon as there's a wall there, they'll get sent directly over towards the mob masher. Now, uh, speaking of the wall, we're gonna have to build a little, uh, a little box to enclose this. Now, I think what we'll try and do 
is get some simulation block. I might even go for the blank simulation block here, actually, and have this along the uh, the corners of this uh, kind of new mob spawning area. And then for the center, I do quite like being able to see inside of my mob spawners. And uh, I will run this all the way up to the top, by the way. Now, if we want to be able to see in, we need to get ourselves a glass that doesn't let light through. Thankfully, again, this is where our good old friend Mob Grinding Utilities comes back. This tinted glass right here, this is a glass that you can see through, but doesn't allow any light to pass through. And even more importantly, it is super easy to make. It's four glass and five coal. And so I think basically what I will try and do here is uh, use this all the way around the outside of the mob farm, like this, and then of course all the way up like this to allow us to see inside while still not letting any light in. That way we are guaranteed to not destroy any of our dreadful dirt and we're also still able to see what's going on in here at the same time. Uh, also, by the way, you can apply the rotten egg from the underside of the uh, the dirt, which is exactly what I plan to do. We can see that uh, over here we have our exposed dirt. And so all we have to do when we're ready to actually uh, trigger the creation of the dreadful dirt is right click our rotten egg on the center block underneath here and that should transform all 25 or in our case all 24 of the uh, of the dirt there into dreadful dirt okay so not too too long later and we now have this uh, full central area here we've got blank simulation block going all the way up to the top and then we have this tinted glass on all four sides and also on the roof so that now we should have a perfectly dark area in the center there for our mobs to spawn in and i've also spent a little bit of time getting some more iron as well here we're currently smelting that up uh, basically we took some uh, gray simulation block which you can make by crafting tungsten with white simulation block and then you can break that down in the dissolver to get iron and then we can repeat that process over and over and over again and then of course combine the iron up and smelt it down the reason for that is that i very much so would like to get 10 of these uh, sharpness upgrades for the mob masher because we are going to get a lot of mob spawning and it'd be nice to kill them as fast as possible so if we're going to make this happen we need 40 iron swords which is a lot of iron swords that's one two three four five six seven eight nine and we're out of space so space is another thing that's becoming a bit of an issue here because our, our drawers are filling up with chemicals i really do need to set up a, a dedicated area for um for all the chemicals we've got a lot of um a lot of stuff clogging up these drawers now which is not ideal let me quickly try and free up a little bit of space here i will move these eventually but for the time being let's see if we can't make a few of these and boom there we go we have 10 mob masher sharpness upgrades just like before we'll go ahead and drop those into the mob masher i'm fairly certain that you get the tinted glass back when you break it we have a spare 11 yeah you do nice okay cool so we can drop these in like so and now if we were to put the rotten egg down on the dirt mobs would start spawning they would get sent over and as i mentioned before we're going to take a block of redstone and then we're going to put that directly underneath the mob masher like that the mob masher is now online and the final piece of the puzzle here is simply getting the items out of the box because of course once the mobs die they're just gonna drop the items on the floor thankfully that is where the absorption hopper comes into play another item from mob grinding utilities fairly easy to make it's three obsidian one hopper and one eye of ender we have everything but the eye of ender and uh, there we're just missing one blaze powder which if memory serves me right we have made before via the chemistry here yeah we need eight carbon eight germanium eight sulfur carbon we have sulfur we have and germanium we have fantastic so let's head back to our combiner let's type in blaze let's go boom carbon sulfur germanium fantastic we don't need that many of them let's make an eye of ender boom and let's craft all that up into an absorption hopper nice so we'll drop this guy down over here now we are going to want to take all of the mob drops that come from this and organize them to either go to our storage drawers we're going to have to allocate quite a few storage drawers uh, potentially maybe over here although we don't have much space like we have this here and, and this here we might have to use a few of the spaces up here as well and potentially move some of these uh, elemental drawers to uh, to replace them with mob drop drawers but uh, we do want to send all of our mob drops either to a drawer or to a trash can so some items we're not going to want to keep for example broken swords broken bows uh, anything that doesn't stack very well items that are just generally useless we're going to want to delete those for that i think we're probably going to want to invest in a trash can from the trash cans mod 
Super easy to make, three stone, five cobblestone, and a regular chest. So we'll drop the item trash can down. I think the range on the absorption hopper is quite large. Let me put this down like here for now, and let's go ahead and show area. So the area is quite big, but you'll see right now it's not quite covering the right area. Thankfully, in here you can offset uh, either up, down, north, south, or east, west. Right now, if we hit F3, we are facing west. So we want to push this in the negative west east direction, I think. We want to push it this way. Yes, that's correct. And uh, if we do something like that, that's going to push this collection area to encompass the entirety of the mob spawner, which is exactly what we're after. We can then go ahead and hide area. And so now anything dropped inside of this box will be collected by the absorption hopper. For the time being, let's go ahead and, uh, and get a chest down. We'll try and make it a pretty big chest because we do want to be able to store quite a bit of, uh, of a backlog here. But uh, do we have what it takes? Oh, we don't have that much gold. Interesting. Uh, actually, we do have quite a bit of, um, of gold element. And uh, if we start processing that, that's again going to free up some space in our storage drawer. So I'll try and make um, a gold chest here and then potentially even upgrade to, uh, to diamond if we have enough diamonds for that. And boom, there is our diamond chest. We also have a little bit more uh, gold dust now, should we need more gold later on in today's stream. But uh, if we go ahead and put this down right about here, we can then open the absorption hopper. And in the top left, we can set the up direction to items. So all items that are collected by the absorption hopper will be then pushed up into this chest. The absorption hopper does also collect experience. And so it might be well worth us investing in another tank. For now, we can make it another one of these mechanism tanks. Never mind, we don't have any redstone. That is, uh, is unfortunate. But uh, at some point in the near future, we should get a tank down uh, next to the um, absorption hopper here to, to start backing up some of the experience that it will collect as well, because later on we can use that uh, to give ourselves levels, potentially to allow us to enchant more. Uh, but also there are some recipes that do just require liquid experience. Uh, either way, I think we are pretty much ready to, uh, to pull the trigger on this. So if we take our rotten egg, and we right click that on the bottom center of our five by five dirt area. That is gonna get transformed into dreadful dirt instantly. We can hear witches up there. And so if we head on back this way, we should start to see mobs spawning somewhat quickly, although not quite as quickly as I was uh, anticipating. But look at that, the, uh, the looting upgrade is doing a tremendous amount of work. And in the few seconds that our mob farm has been online, we've already managed to acquire nine ender pearls, which would have taken us substantially longer uh, via the uh, the uh, chemistry crafting, which is very nice indeed. So now the trouble becomes filtering this to where it actually needs to go. So we can put the trash can down uh, somewhere over here. And I think what we'll try and do here is get another laser or a few more lasers and see if we can't connect this up somehow to our pre-existing laser network and, uh, and then use some of the filters from Laser.io to transfer the things that we want out of this chest over and into our storage drawer and the things we don't want over and around into the trash can. Look at that, right out of the gate, we've also got more redstone as well, so we can use that to make that tank that we just tried to make. And this is gonna be a nice uh, secondary source of redstone as well, which is very useful. And you'll see we've instantly filled up the internal buffer on experience. So we'll do this and we will set the north side to output fluids. And there we go, we're gonna to start to very, very quickly fill that tank up actually. We're probably gonna need an even bigger tank. Uh, do we have the jumbo tank? We do. The jumbo tank is actually, it's a much better tank than this. We'll get rid of this temporarily. Uh, the jumbo tank here can hold uh, a million miller buckets, which is 1,024 buckets. It's made by crafting together four singularity tanks. Uh, and really it's just a lot of iron and glass. You need five glass and four iron per singularity tank, and then four singularity tanks and four iron gets you the jumbo tank. This here can only hold uh, 32 buckets. This here can hold over a thousand. One, two, three, four, and boom, there is our jumbo tank. Let's go ahead and drop this down right about here. And while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and do something like this. Grab the fluid pipes and just uh, empty this tank out here. So we don't have a random tank that's got a random amount of experience in it. Okay, so a little while later, and uh, I went through and mined a little bit more in the mining dimension to get us some redstone because we were running a little bit low. And I also headed back through to the nether. And uh, as luck would have it, our new nether portal is right next to a, a quartz biome. So there's a ton of nether quartz just on the surface that you can uh, just mine and bring back. But there's also a lot of uh, this stuff right here, the raw quartz block that you can also just mine and then uh, smelt into nether quartz. So 
going forward, I really don't think another quart is going to be a problem for us whatsoever. And I've also gone ahead and made some logic chips here. And so now we should be able to get a few more uh, laser nodes and laser connectors to, uh, to connect all of the mob drops here over to the storage draw system. As you can see, we've managed to fill up quite nicely in the time it took me to get all of that stuff. We've got a ton of ender pearls as well as some ender pearl fragments, which you can craft up into even more ender pearls. Uh, we also have these witch hats, which I believe you might even be able to craft into ender pearls as well. No, you can craft these into like redstone and glowstone. But uh, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, I think the nebulous hearts. Yes, these can also be crafted into ender pearls. So we have a lot of, of ways to get ender pearls now, which is uh, is good stuff. But we do need to uh, to organize this. So let's go ahead and start by crafting another laser node. And we'll put this laser node, I think, right about here. And we'll use that to extract from the diamond chest and insert items into that trash can so right now we have four item cards that is fantastic and we also do have a, a basic filter as well we have two basic filters which is also good so uh, in the insert card we want to filter and we want to ignore nbt so basically stuff like the bow here we want to throw all bows away if you change this to allow match mbt it will only throw away bows that have exactly 157 out of 384 durability that's not what we want to do we want to ignore mbt we want to make sure that all bows are thrown away uh, the same is true for the uh, crossbows here we're not going to need all of those crossbows we can throw that away as well we do want to make sure it's set to allow so this is what we're allowing to be thrown away not what uh, is disallowed so other than the bows we also have gold chest plates here it's quite possible if not likely that we're probably going to have to add more things to this filter as time goes on because i have a feeling we're going to get even more uh, random mob drops like random chest plates and stuff that we're going to have to throw away as well things like potions here i'm probably going to throw those away as well just because they take up a lot of space and i'm probably not going to use a potion of slowness at, at any point in the near future I'm also being told by the Twitch chat that it might not be worth keeping these um, charm fragments either, so we could potentially look at uh, throwing those away as well. But uh, let's go ahead and change this item card to extract. And then what we'll do is we'll set the bottom to insert, and then we will set the north to extract. So that should start to extract all of the, uh, the bows here and all of the crossbows, and just delete those into the item trash can. Now, as for getting to the storage drawers this node over here is uh, is quite far away so we are almost certainly going to have to use a, a couple of laser connectors here um, i believe we found out that the maximum range is maybe eight blocks so one two three four five six seven can i put this like here or is that too far away let's find out if we grab our uh, laser wrench and we do this yeah, no, that is too far away, unfortunately. So it looks like we are going to have to move that um, that laser inside. Someone in the Twitch chat does make the good point, though, that we could just hook things up to the bottom area here. That might look a little tidier. So if we instead, we're still going to need the same number of, uh, of connectors. But if we come over here and we kind of go straight down from our node to here, again, you can only go eight. So we are going to have to make sure that we have um, a laser node that is fewer than eight away all right so i don't love this because we did have to have like this little um fence post here to raise this laser connector up to allow it to connect to that uh, laser node there but we do now have a, a laser line here that connects our laser node round along and to our previously pre-existing laser network uh, which therefore connects it up to the draw controller uh, the good news is that even without any filtering this um is kind of fine because the draw controller already acts as a filter because it only allows things into it that are already in here right because we've locked all of the uh, the storage drawers so uh, for example over here we can see that uh, rotten flesh is ticking up 17 71 72 rotten flesh is making its way into there because over here it is being extracted from the north and then sent down via all of the lasers up and into the draw controller now uh, the trouble at the moment is that it is very 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 slow and uh, if we're going to make this viable we're going to have to make it much much faster as you can see things are coming in far too quickly uh, for this very slow extraction speed thankfully you can make the uh, the card overclockers here uh, and thankfully it doesn't look too difficult to make now i believe you can put i think it's maybe up to eight of these into a card so if we add one that's going to allow us to increase the uh well first of all we can increase the transfer amount to eight 
right? So we can increase the transfer amount so that right now it's moving eight uh, rotten flesh every second. If we then add the overclocker, we can now increase this amount up to 16 and we can lower that to 15 ticks. So now it's moving double the number of items and it's doing it in three quarters of the time. So now instead of taking 20 ticks per transfer, which is one second in Minecraft, it's taking 15 ticks, which is three quarters of a second, and it's moving twice as much. So it's doing quite well, uh, but we can take it further. We can add another one of these card overclockers to this guy, like so. That's gonna allow us to increase this again, double it to 32, and bring this down to 10. So now it's moving uh, essentially 64 a second. So one stack per second is being extracted from here. I do think that that is almost certainly going to be fast enough. I can tell right now it's not, but that's because we're working our way through the backlog of, uh, of stuff that is in here and that is on the floor. But I think once that backlog is worked through, this should be more than enough. We are, of course, gonna have to allocate a few more uh, storage drawers to some of these drops, like the uh, the ender pearls here, uh, so that they can be moved out and uh, and stored as well. Uh, stuff like bones, gunpowder, uh, spider eyes. We don't have drawers for any of these yet. So real quick, let me go ahead and uh, and just allocate drawers for all of the new mob drops that we actually want uh, to keep. All right, so we have a uh, most of the items now allocated to their own storage drawer. We got our spider eyes, our gunpowder. We got our uh, nebulous enderman hearts. We got our witches hats. All the good stuff is being stored. And uh, there might be one or two things that I have uh, forgotten here, but uh, actually there's quite a few things that I've forgotten, like uh, these uh, marks. There's a lot of stuff for mana and artifice uh, that is just kind of sitting around these uh, flowers at the bottom here. I'm sure we'll find spaces for those uh, fairly soon, but we are running into a problem, or we're going to run into a problem, and that is that uh, these storage drawers can only hold 512 of a given item. For example, down here, we are already full on slime balls. I'm not quite sure why. Um, once something becomes full, there seems to be a, a visual glitch where you can see here in the top left that we actually have 343 oak logs, but it doesn't show it in there. It might actually be when it gets to triple digits, maybe, although this is showing. I don't know what is causing it, but um, as you can see in the top left there, we have 512 slime balls. And so now all of the extra slime balls that are being generated by this farm are just sitting in the chest. There are two ways that we can rectify this. Uh, one we've done before, if we go to the storage drawers mod here in JEI, we can craft some of these uh, storage upgrades. These are going to allow the uh, any particular drawer to store more of a given item. Uh, for example, if we were to make, let's say, a, a diamond upgrade, this will increase the storage of the drawer by 16 times its base value. So you do 512 multiplied by 16. That would allow this drawer to hold four lots of 8,192. So instead of being able to hold 512 slime balls, it would be able to hold 8,192 slime balls in that one slot right there. That will solve the problem temporarily, but really we're just pushing the can down the road there because at some point in the future, we are then going to run into the same problem again, where we still are gonna fill up the draw uh, once it hits 8,192, and then we're gonna have to upgrade it again and keep upgrading it if we wanna keep kicking that can down the road. Alternatively, we can make the void upgrade. That is this one right here. This will delete any excess items. So as soon as the drawer becomes full, for example, like the slime ball, any excess items that try and go into that drawer will instead just be deleted. Now, I think we wanna do a combination here. I think we do wanna make some drawer upgrades so that we can store more than 512 items because it's gonna be nice to have more than 512 uh, of, of a certain item. For example, we're going to use 400 ender pearls next episode. So we don't really want to delete you know, everything over 512. But at the same time, if we want our system to continue to run smoothly, uh, we are gonna have to put void upgrades in almost all of the drawers here to allow us to not clog up uh, and allow the system to not back up once any single individual drawer uh, gets backed up. Now, to make the void upgrades, it's fairly easy. It is one upgrade template, which is uh, just a storage drawer with sticks surrounded by obsidian. Uh, right now, we have 57 obsidian, which is quite a bit, but uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, we can head through to the nether, and because our new nether location is uh, right next to a big old pile of obsidian, we should be able to just harvest that and, uh, and get ourselves quite a large number of void upgrades, hopefully, fairly quickly. Uh, we do want to do this without, uh, whilst trying to make sure that we don't actually break the nether portal itself, and ideally without breaking into the uh, the lake of lava either. All right, so a good amount of obsidian later, and we should now be able to make quite a large number of these uh, of these void upgrades. So we'll just craft up a bunch of storage doors, which is just a bunch of wood. Thankfully, we do have wood here. We should definitely look at making a second uh, a replacement bonsai pot over here so we can actually get uh, more wood coming in because right now it's, we're just depleting that slowly but surely, uh, which is fine for the minute, but uh, eventually Futurizer is going to be annoyed when we have zero wood left. 
We can then go and craft those storage drawers into upgrade templates. Uh, again, thankfully, we do have sticks coming in, and I did set up a new uh, storage drawer here for sticks. Uh, also, we do have sticks in here as well. But uh, that's 64. And then how many of these do we have? We've got 3, 6, 9, 12. So 24 uh, plus however many we have along the top. I think, uh, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 21, 21. Uh, plus 24 is uh, 45. And boom, there's uh, 54 void upgrades, which I think is too many, but that's fine. Uh, now we can go ahead and just right click those onto every single one of these drawers here. And so now going forward, we shouldn't really clog up on any of these. These should all just uh, delete any excess items that come in. Uh, we could do the same over here. I don't really think there's much point in doing that with this system because uh, with this system, the only thing that gets clogged up is, is this. And it's actually good for us to back up on encrypted matter, which we have done. We're up at 2048 there. We've uh, maxed out that drawer and we've also maxed out this drawer and then this drawer's on its way to being maxed out and we have 622 cryptocurrency. So I don't think any of these drawers need it, but we do still have uh, nine of these uh, void upgrades. I'll put one over here as well, just in case, uh, because sometimes this will fill up on things like sticks and then it'll stop making oak logs, which is not what we want. We want it to keep producing wood. Uh, obviously, once we get a bonsai pot back on it, even if it is full on sticks, and then in terms of actual draw upgrades, um, for now, we don't really have much in the way of any good material. We could make like some iron upgrades or potentially just some uh, tier one storage upgrades with obsidian, which would give us a slight increase. And maybe for something like the ender pearl draw, that might be worthwhile temporarily. But um, I think for now, it's fine if excess items get deleted. I don't think we're really close to deleting any... Uh, you know, valuable items like any of the uh, the ingots or, you know, diamonds, redstone, anything like that. Uh, the only things we're going to delete are mob drops. So slime balls, for instance, uh, maybe some bone meal or something might get deleted. Uh, yeah, gunpowder, excess gunpowder is going to be deleted. For now, I think that's fine. Next time, we'll come back, we'll get ourselves, hopefully, into digital resources. Once we get into digital resources, it should become, I don't know how I got damaged there. But uh, once we get into digital resources, it should become much, much easier for us to get a large quantity of things like diamonds, emeralds. Uh, the, the resources that are going to allow us to massively increase the amount of uh, items that these drawers can hold. It is food, not um, a tech. That is my bad. Thank you to the Twitch chat for pointing that out. But uh, yeah, you can put many uh, upgrades into here. Right now we've got the void upgrade. We can put in an extra six upgrades on top of that to allow these to hold a staggering number of items. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the plan. Next time we'll come back and we'll see about getting that end portal. If we can get that end portal, we can head on through to the end, we can get ourselves some Dragon's Breath, we can come back and we can utilize that Dragon's Breath to get us the resource simulator, and once we have the resource simulator, we can then make these uh, resource chipsets, which we can then use in the resource simulator to generate that specific resource. And yeah, then we can push forward, try and get even more resource simulators, try and get even more resources until we have far too many resources, and then we can look at uh, pushing through uh, into the uh, EOF quest line. Eventually, we're not gonna turbo our way, by the way, straight through to EOF, there obviously are a few steps in between like going to space and, uh, and getting started with a few of the tech mods we do also at some point in the near future want to look at upgrading our uh, current storage situation uh, that being the simple storage network we'll pivot over to either applied logistics 2 or refined storage but those are all problems for future isaac because for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there